Hello and welcome to a quick unboxing of the Razer Imperator Expert Gaming Mouse. Mostly they're aiming for like a comfortable mouse for gaming. As always, great Razer packaging. There's a tray with the mouse on in a nice lime green. There is the manual and driver CDs and stuff stuck in at the bottom. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll just put that aside for a second. Um, really quickly go over this if I can get it out without destroying the packaging. For gamers by gamers, razorzone.com. As always, you know this stuff. Manual, quick start CD. Uh, quick start guide, no CDs at all. Uh, stickers and some pro gamers using the Imperator. Uh, CS 1.6 player, apparently. Okay, so the mouse itself is completely made of plastic. There's no metal on here. Um, this top part is like a matte plastic and the side is a soft touch sort of plastic. They're slightly different. This one is less sticky when you've got, say, a sweaty palm. Um, here's the DPI adjustment buttons. It goes all the way up to 6400 DPI on the uh, laser sensor down there, 4G laser sensor for the 2012 Imperator. So it has five different stages. All of the stages can be changed in the software to whatever DPI you want. And the software will actually bring up a little menu icon which has a little bar that tells you what you're on and how high that is to the maximum or the minimum. Um, okay, so the scroll wheel on here is very different to most mice I've ever owned. In fact, the last one I owned didn't even have a scroll wheel, it was the MX Air. Um, but it's got a big scroll wheel in comparison to this Logitech. Uh, there's ridges on there for easy grip. It's a, it feels very mechanical to click on it, which I really like. Um, and this one, not so much. It feels like a normal scroll wheel that you get on any old office mouse. Um, and the click on it is a lot more like that click than this one is of this click. As um, this one squashes down quite a lot before it clicks and squashes even further afterwards where this one just has a single click and it doesn't go down very far at all uh, which I really like it also sticks up and it's in the perfect position for when you're using the mouse um, to scroll up and down easily uh, on the left is these buttons here forwards and backwards on your browser um, but they can be set to whatever you want on the Razer um, PC software uh, it can be really useful. I know a lot of people that use that as the uh, speak button for TeamSpeak um, and they can be changed to whatever you want but also they can be slid up and down from this here at the bottom. It's not just all the way up one way, that's stuck there so there's about five different levels which is great because then it fits your hand nicely and ergonomically as they originally told you on the packaging. Um, the skid plates on the bottom are nice and large. They really do move along a mouse mat especially very easily. Um, there's a massive one at the bottom, one around the centre to keep it up from the mat and two massive ones at the top too. The actual shape of the mouse is not an ambidextrous design. As you can see there, it's quite severely raked to the right. Um, but I think that's great for when you're using it if you are right handed. And yeah, the uh, the mouse is, is an ergonomic design, as they say. Uh, it fits really well in the hand. It does cover your whole palm for people that palm the uh, mouse. Uh, and it also is quite quite nice for people that use a claw grip as well. Um, the only problem is, when you do use a palm grip, sorry to keep turning it upside down, but my, my hand floats over the edge, which is quite a big problem for a lot of people. They won't like that at all. Um, so, to be honest, Razer, if you'd made it another centimetre long, a lot more people would be happy palm gripping this mouse. But instead, a lot of people, I think, are going to be going for the Death Adder design sort of mouse, like the uh, Mamba, um, because it's a lot longer and, uh, and it fits palm grip players a lot easier. One thing I have to mention is the fact that it works on Mac and PC, and the Mac actually has software nowadays for the Imperator, so you can do all of this programming, changing the lighting sequences. You can turn these lights on and off, by the way, so you don't have to have that annoying strobe light, which well, I find annoying anyway, um, on all the time. So yeah, it can be set up the way you want. I think it looks great. 
Uh, it's probably one of the best looking mice I've ever seen. Um, and in comparison to most other mice, the uh, sensor on there is far superior. It can track um, plenty of meters a second. I mean, you can't move your mouse fast enough. Um, last thing there really is to mention is the braided cable. It's quite an easy to flex braided cable, unlike the one on the uh, Black Widow keyboard. Um, so, yeah, it is quite useful. I think it looks great. Finally, on the bottom, this dual sensor system has a laser and an optical sensor. And it's not one of them bright red optical sensors as it is plugged in right now. It's just another sensor to let the mouse know how high it is off the table so you can change your lift off distance in the software for it to um, stop tracking the moment you pick it off the table or in fact if you want it to, to keep tracking until it's really off the table. It's up to you, it can be changed. Um, it also allows you to calibrate to the surface of your mouse mat um, which works really really badly on this mouse mat as there's two different colours the same texture but they're different colours and if you calibrate on the green it'll only work on the green and if you calibrate on the black it'll only work on the black so for some odd reason Razer's decided to design the new Goliathus Extended to have two different colours on with a mice which have surface calibration which doesn't allow having more than one colour surface um, so yeah you want to turn that off probably if you're using a multicoloured surface but Apart from that, I think everything about this mouse is pretty much perfect. The length is a bit short, uh, the service calibration is a bit annoying, um, the lights are only ever blue, you can't change them like you can on the Mamba, but I mean that's probably just a gimmicky premium feature that they put on the Mamba, um, which some people are going to like a lot I'm sure. But yeah, please subscribe to my channel and uh, also check out my other videos. Thanks a lot.